Hello there. I hope you guys missed me. My name is Mohammed. You can call me Mo. I hope I'm your favorite YouTube host on most things real estate. I'm also a real estate investor and a broker based out of New York City. And in this week's episode, we're going to talk something about a little bit more focused on real estate investing. It doesn't just have to really apply for residential or commercial real estate investing, because this term is something that is universal across any kind of market or any kind of real estate formulas that you might be using. And that is the NOI, which stands for the net operating income. So without further ado, let's jump right into exactly what the NOI is and what its components are to help you calculate it for your formulas and investing. Now, the reason why net operating income or NOI is so crucial is it's because it tells the investor what the overall net income of the property is after you take over the gross rentals or gross revenue minus the operating expenses. Now, you might notice when you're looking at the NOI or looking at NOI formulas, that mortgage and interest are not included in this uh, particular equation. That's because the amount of mortgage and the debt service and coverage, all those things differ from investor to investor. One investor might prefer having no debt, another investor might be, you know, might prefer having 80% or 90% debt, whatever it is. That's why the NOI does not include uh, the mortgage and interest deducted from the overall uh, gross income, right? Now, in terms of the different operating expenses that the net, o the net operating income takes into consideration, the first and biggest is obviously the rental income. That would basically be your gross revenue, right? That would be what you start out with. Any kind of real estate you're investing, you're gonna have some form of rental income, whether it's from tenants that it's a residential uh, unit or residential property, or it's like commercial tenants that are paying commercial leases. Uh, could also be that you're renting out, let's say, washing machines, uh, parking lots, uh, garage spaces, things like that. At the end of the day, your rental income is basically going to be your gross rental income. Now, the operating expenses are where uh, you, I would say, should really sharpen your pencil because I've seen assumptions vary from investor to investor in terms of how much of a expense percentage they should calculate for each of these categories. Now, to begin with, you obviously have have your vacancy and credit losses. Now, vacancy and credit losses basically are referring to when a apartment building might not be fully rented out all the time. So you have to calculate a certain percentage of that overall gross rental income to be deducted for uh, potential vacancies. And credit losses basically means unpaid rent. So let's say, you know, God forbid you have to evict a tenant who hasn't paid rent in two, for two months or three months, whatever amount it is. You can't necessarily go after them for those rental amounts or for those unpaid lease amounts because they're probably not gonna pay you if they haven't paid you in, in the last couple of months. So you have to factor that into over your overall NOI. Some investors might be more conservative and take a higher percentage. Others might be more optimistic and take a lower percentage. At the end of the day, it, it depends from investor to investor, right? Uh, the second kind of expenses that you should take into account in your NOI is property taxes, right? Death and taxes, everyone's gotta pay uh, property taxes. So it doesn't matter who you are or what scale of investor you are, you have to make sure you're accounting for the overall property taxes or annualized property taxes when you're calculating your NOI. Now, the third factor that you should also keep in mind is property insurance. Insurance does differ from property type to property type, right? Even let's say a large scale apartment building might not have the same um, uh, insurance premium that a apartment building that has commercial units inside it uh, might dictate, right? So you have to make sure that you're shopping around for different insurance quotes. Doesn't matter if you're buying a house or if you're buying a you know medium-sized multifamily or even a, a shopping, a large shopping mall. You have to make sure you get your different insurance coverage quotes in. That way, you can absolutely calculate accurately what your NOI is going to be at the bottom, you know, at the bottom line, or at the end of the day, or at the end of the year. Uh, the next kind of operating expense that you have to keep in mind from your NOI is your property management fees. Now, I'm a little bit greedy. I don't use any property manager for my own properties just because it's pretty easy to manage, I would say, after you've you know, gotten a couple of months of experience in. However, for a lot of large-scale apartment buildings or large-scale you know, portfolios, it's very difficult to self-manage. So you obviously want to make sure you're accounting for property management and, and the property management fee calculated into your NOI. Property management fees vary from um, you know property management company to company. It also varies from asset type to asset class. So you know an apartment building might not get the same property management fee costs that a shopping mall might get, for example. Uh, so it all boils down to who you're working with as well as what kind of asset class you're thinking about buying. Another factor that you also have to keep in mind when you're calculating your NOI is repairs and maintenance. Again, this boils down to the investor, but also the asset class and the property type itself, right? So if you're buying a very turnkey property that was just newly constructed, you're probably not gonna account for as much of a high percentage for repairs and maintenance from your NOI because you know for a fact property's brand new, so it's not really gonna take too much. However, over the years, you're probably gonna wanna keep adjusting this I typically will use five to seven percent. Some people that are buying a little bit of an older building might use a higher percentage. 
if it's a newer building, maybe something less, but again, it boils down to what your investment criteria is and what assumptions you're making. This is something of an assumption that you would have to make. The benchmark though that I've seen most often is like five to 7%. Uh, very similar for utilities as well. So utilities, of course, does depend on property type to property type. For example, you might think of, you know, you might be thinking about buying a large multifamily property, but turns out that there's only one water pipe in the building because it was built a long time ago. That means the landlord most definitely has to pay for the water bill. Otherwise, you have to get all the tenants on the same page in terms of you know dividing the the water bill evenly, which is probably not going to happen. Uh, you also have to of course look into you know gas, electric, oil, maybe even sometimes to figure out exactly what the last 12 months costs are, and then probably you know extrapolate off of that for your operating income. Uh, other things as well are like operating and maintenance costs. These are like day-to-day -day expenses. You know, let's say someone loses a key, you got to pay for like changing a new lock or uh, you know you have to have uh, hire someone to come and clean the facade of the building these are day-to-day -day costs that you just absolutely have so you're not really going to be able to exclude them per se unless you don't plan on advertising the the building at all or you know maintaining the building uh, which leads me to my next uh, cost which is advertising and marketing right if you if let's say for example you own a large property whether it's an apartment building or a shopping mall you wanna make sure you're able to attract the right tenants and that includes broker fees, that includes paying for advertising material or maybe even a big banner sign that says, hey, for rent units available, whatever it is, those factors of course have to be accounted for when you're calculating your NOI. You might also wanna account for broker commissions. Let's say for example, you as a landlord don't wanna be responsible for sourcing all the different tenants. So you have to hire a broker and then the broker will be able to source the tenants of course. In most cases, I've seen that the landlord is responsible for the broker commissions. So you have to make sure you keep that into account, which also leads me to my you know miscellaneous expenses. Uh, accounting fees, legal fees, uh, maybe even association dues, administration, you know, administrative costs, things like that, paperwork. Uh, a lot of these things, uh, sometimes investors don't necessarily account for, but these are all the different soft costs that go into holding or owning any kind of uh, real estate or any kind of property, uh, whether it's a small, you know, single family or even a large scale apartment building or even a shopping plaza, you have to take into account all these different costs. You might be able to change your assumptions, but you still have to take into all you have taken into account all these costs when you're calculating your NOI, and then you get to decide whether or not it's worth the investment for you. I, with that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. I hope to see you guys next week. Bye bye.